Let's talk about CQL copy, which is a built-in command in Cassandra on the command line. But what is it used for? Well, if you can see from this example, there's really two ways to go. There's copy table from and copy table to. What this is used to do is move data in and out of a Cassandra cluster, not just a node, an entire cluster. And it's specifically around a table. So the copy from is take the data out, copy to, put the data in. And there's lots of options in how it works. So the copy from a delimited file, so you take a delimited file, it could be a CSV by default, or you can use tab, my personal favorite, whatever the delimiter, you could specify what it is. But we wanna take a delimited file and put that data into a Cassandra table in a cluster. So often this is a good way to load test data, pre-production, that sort of thing. It's not meant to move a lot of data at the same time. It's a small amount of data in comparison to how much a Cassandra cluster can hold. This should not be confused with the insert command, which is a different way to do it, but this is similar to how it works. It will insert data into the cluster. So there are some rules to work with here. For instance, if you do not specify the rows that you're inserting, then you need to have the same number of columns that are inside the table, and it will try to match those up. Another thing is if there's an empty data set, it's considered to be a null. It's not a zero, it's not a space, it's a null. And that's what it assumes whenever it finds no data. The copy from is always about importing, but small amounts of data. Don't think about this as a, I'm gonna reload my entire database. There's another tool for that that we'll talk about later, but this is a good way to get small amounts of data in and out of the system. Just follow that rule and you'll be fine. For those really large data sets, you wanna use DS bulk. It's been designed to run the full load of the data that can be stored in a cluster at that scale. So a better tool for if you're moving large data sets. So to run CQL copy, first thing you do is you look at your file. What's the delimiter? What options do I need to use? Now in this case, it's a pipe delimiter. Not my choice, but hey, that's what it is. So you need to specify that the delimiter is a pipe symbol and then it has a header. So that last name, first name, email, created date is the first row of the file. So if that's the first row of the file and it's the delimiter of a pipe, you specify that in your configuration. When you run a copy from, it will be happy. All that data will go directly into the user table. Good to go. So those options, as I mentioned before, like delimiter are something you need to specify. The default, of course, is a comma because it's comma delimited. Delimiter is something though that's pretty universally different. Let's face it. No one uses the same delimiter all the time. It's good to have options. The header is a true or a false. If you're including a header, specify the fields that you have in that file. When you import the data, it will look at that first row and say, aha, here's all the data in the columns I want it presented. I will import this data for you. You have to make sure those column names exist in the database, but that's what it's looking for, true or false. The chunk size or how many records are passed to the processes to run to insert into the database. Now, this could be a performance concern. If you have a lot of chunk size, then it can potentially load faster as it's getting larger bits of data and pushing it faster into the database. It can also overwhelm your database a little bit. Let's say that you're running on a very small configuration, say on your laptop, well, maybe you don't need as big of a chunk size. Use that as a tuning parameter. Skip rows is one of those things that's used, say, in a data loading scenario where you just wanna load a little bit of data, maybe a sample. Again, probably used for your testing scenarios, not something that you'd normally use in production. Copy two, in this case, is when you wanna be able to move the data from a Cassandra table into a file. Copy two, pick the name of the table, and then output it directly to the file system. This is the default. And the default is it creates a CSV file of all the data inside of that table. Some of the parameters that you can put into a copy too are just specifying the exact fields that you want to copy out. So for instance, if you have a lot of columns in a particular table, maybe you only want four or five of those fields out, specify them here. If you don't, it will just dump the entire table. So you need to specify the file name when you do the copy too. You can also use standard out, and in the case of copy from standard in, this is useful if you're using say a pipe or redirect where you're bringing in data from the command line. And if you're one of those command line nerds, you know who my people are. That's a good thing, right? Using pipes and delimiters, well, we have an option for you. Just keep in mind, if you're using standard in, the end of the delimited data needs to have a backslash period to note the end of the file. 
So that's a pretty basic overview of how to use a CQL copy command in and out. Again, limited use case, don't use it for all of your data, but I think you can find some pretty useful places for this to be used.